Cool. Good morning and welcome everybody to Profitable Networking Mindsets. Does this sound like you? You're spending three hours a, a fortnight on your networking. So you're attending your, your uh, fortnightly hub meeting and then you have maybe one or two uh, get freshes or catch ups with people. Uh, you may get a couple of referrals uh, every year, but definitely not on a consistent basis, but you're not getting any direct sales opportunities. Does that sound like you? Give me a nod if you can relate to that <laughs> or you know someone who relates to that. Well, this could be you. You could be generating two or more sales opportunities per month. Uh, you can get regular referrals and achieve a massive return on investment. And by the way, that was uh, th that previous slide was me uh, back in the day until I actually decided to take networking super seriously and actually sign up for Fresh. That was uh, nearly two years ago, and it's been one of the best decisions that I've made. So just uh, I'll cover a little bit about myself. I'm a natural introvert with a side of people pleaser. So if I could do well in networking, then pretty much anybody else can. So, but uh, here's my point of uh, credibility. Okay, so I've been in in sales for 15 years. Five of that was in a in a employed sales role, and 10 years has been in business. I've never stopped selling since day one of starting this business. 10 years of that uh, time was spent doing networking. Although, admittedly, uh, about uh, eight of those years was doing hub hopping. So I was going along to all of the different networking functions out there looking for all the free options. It wasn't until I really took it seriously that I really started seeing the results, which brings us to step number one, which is to be highly proactive. One of my favorite sayings in sales and in business is to always maintain initiative. I've abbreviated it to AMI, always maintain initiative. What this means is don't ever leave it to someone else to invite you to, to have a get fresh. Always be the one to take the first step. Like take, take the assertive stance. Don't wait for someone else to do it. You have to remember this, this saying. I'm sure we've all heard this since we're kids. If it is to be, it's up to me. Because we have to face the reality. Everybody's busy and they're not going to take the initiative unless you take the first step. So here's a really important equation to remember. The number of meetings that you have with people multiplied by your conversion rate is going to equal your opportunities. So let's just say you have 10 meetings per month and one in five of them potentially need your services. That generates a, a very conservative two opportunities per month. So from that perspective, here are some of my recommended activity levels. And Darren, feel free to chime in and correct me on these if you feel that it should be higher. Uh, what, at least one networking meeting per week. So you've got your home hub every fortnight. Hop along to another one on the alternative week. Now, I also understand, by the way, that everybody has businesses to run. You can't spend all of your time just networking and meeting people. But here's the, the thing, right? If you're being proactive in using those opportunities to find sales opportunities, then it will be time well spent, even if you spend a lot of time networking. So here's the funny thing. Every fortnight, we have the report on how many Get Freshers we've had uh, in the fortnight. And, and for some reason, I'm always at, the, <laughs> I'm not trying to boast here, but um, every time I, I say five to eight, uh, get freshes in a fortnight. I'm always the top one. And then we have some other members that say they had one or two in a fortnight. So if you don't have the activity levels, you look back at that equation, it's just not going to work out. You're not going to, you're not going to generate any opportunities for yourself if you only have low volume of meetings. And my third tip is more of a qualitative point is to just volunteer and just to contribute wherever possible. If your hub needs an education coordinator, if they need a, um, meeting coordinators, uh, the, the, uh, the second in charge, just put your hand up and volunteer. It's a huge credibility builder uh, from that perspective. Okay, so that's step number one. Step number two is to actually create a sales process. So when you have these uh, get, get freshes, right? Have a process so that you know what to do next 
if there is an opportunity to work with them. So the first step is to meet and qualify. This step number two is to present. So don't ever sell on the first meeting, okay? Please don't do that. Don't take my advice out of context and, and try to be salesy, all right? The first meeting is just to meet and to qualify if you can help them. Then you organize a separate meeting to then discuss the opportunity to work together. Um, and then the third step is to actually ask for their commitment, okay? Super simple, three steps in this process. The meet and the qualify stage, here's what you need to do. So these are the get freshes, right? So the objective is to get to know each other, nice and simple. Everybody does that by default. But the thing that most people don't do is to actually learn what the other person's goals are. Like, what, what are you hoping to achieve in the next 12 months? Uh, what are your challenges? What's stopping you from getting there? And by asking these questions, which are perfectly organic questions, you could ask anybody in any context, you're actually trying to explore if you can help that person or not. So we'll have more details on this in the third segment for today. Uh, but that's, that's the get fresh stage. Now, at the presentation phase, so this is something that most, let's face it, most, most um, networkers don't even get to this stage at all. But once you get to this stage, you'll notice a, a little bit of a trend in these three steps, okay? Recap their goals. So you want to grow your business by X amount in the next 12 months. Then you show them how you will help them to achieve that goal. The third step is to prove that you can. Again, super simple. Recap their goals, show them how you're going to get them there and prove that you can. So usually that's testimonials, case studies, that credibility building things like that. Okay, so that's the pre presentation phase. Then finally is the close. So the big mistake that many, many people make in business and in sales is that they don't ask and they don't schedule the next catch up. The phrase I never wanna hear from any of you today is get back to me if you'd like to go ahead. Please don't do that. <laughs> you've suddenly given them the initiative. They're going to get distracted and you've made their life harder because you've given them another thing that they have to, to put on their to-do list to, to get back to you. If you schedule in the, the next catch-up, what that means is that by default, they're gonna, you're going to talk, it's planned, it's in the calendar, you get a definite answer from them. If you want to make things like, I, I totally get it, by the way, we don't want to be pushy, we don't want to be, you know, salesy. So what you can do to put, dial that back a lot is to actually invite them to reject you, right? So what you say to them is, we'll, we'll schedule this uh, follow-up phone call or Zoom meeting. You can let me know, yay or nay. And if you decide not to go ahead, I'm not going to take it personally, I promise you, right? be totally okay with them rejecting you. And if you invite them to do that, you're going to reduce your desperation and you're gonna increase your trustworthiness. Okay, so those are the three steps. Let's focus in on the get freshes and how we can be fully others centric and at the same time, find opportunities to serve and to help others. And from this perspective, I'm going to refer back to active listening. Active listening, is the single most powerful human relationship technique that there is, bar none. If everybody were to practice active listening more, the world would be such a better place. Relationships would be safe. Bosses would be a lot better bosses. <laughs> salespeople would be better salespeople. This, these techniques have been even used in hostage negotiation situations to neutralize the hostility of the hostage taker. So if it works in hostage situations, it'll work in networking as well. So here's what you do. You be fully client, others centric. You spend the first two thirds of the meeting asking about the other person's business. You, you are showing the other person that you are more interested in them than you are in pitching your services, right? Now, here's an interesting thing. So let's just say after today, you decide to catch up with someone else in this meeting. You've both heard this principle, the two thirds principle. Two thirds plus two thirds is obviously more than one, right? 
So what actually happens in these situations is that it becomes a 50-50. It becomes a tug of war on who can focus on the other person more, <laughs> which is a really funny thing to see. But when you get into this situation, here's the thing. You know that the other person is, is good with, that they're being mindful about trying to put the attention back on you. These are the kinds of people who have the emotional intelligence and the other's centricness. So you know that these are the kinds of people you want to do business with and the ones that you want to collaborate with. So if you meet people who push back on your two thirds and it becomes 50-50, you know they're a good quality person. So the next step is to listen with your full body language. So make sure that your phone is on silent or if it accidentally rings, you just silent it as quickly as you can and just put it away without even looking at it, right? Give them full eye contact. Don't allow yourself to get distracted. Then here's the most important part for active listening, which is to reflect back to the person what they're saying to you. Because when you do this, you have shown that you have processed what they've said and you actually are in synchronization with the other person. So Rowie, you being a counselor and, and coach, you do you probably do this all the time. This is preaching to the, to the choir. <laughs> okay, what do you actually ask, right? So if we're going to spend two thirds of the meeting talking about the other person, what are you going to ask? Very, very simple, straightforward questions. Always, always, always start with house business. And it's such a good open question because people tend to talk about their challenges um, or the things that they're happy about at this stage. But then what you need to do next is to dig a bit deeper, right? When you're talking to a friend and, and you, you're talking to a good friend and you tell them about a great day that you've had, the first thing they're gonna do is to ask you more questions about, oh, what was so good or, or what was so challenging, right? So we need to do the same thing. We need to dig deeper. Once you've done this, you ask who is an ideal client for you? Again, super natural networking question. You're, you're asking about this because you want to refer business to them. You want to show them that you're interested in keeping an eye out to give them referrals. Who wouldn't want to answer that question? Then the final thing that you want to do is to ask, where do you see yourself in the next year? So this is a very goal-oriented question. And you're asking all of these out of genuine interest, but you're also asking because you want to find out if you can help them. So when I, when I meet with people, I ask them, where do you see yourself in the next year or how's business? Frequently, people will tell me, oh, um, uh, yeah, things have been tough, haven't been able to get a lot of new business lately. Or they may say, oh, my ideal client is X, Y, Z. Then my next follow-up question is, where do you typically find them? How, how well are you going with converting those? And those are the things that I can then use as part of a business case for working with those individuals. So uh, uh, now that, that being said, it's very easy for me, right? Because my, my service helps other businesses. But for some of you, especially for those of you who are in legal, it may be a different case. You can't exactly ask, uh, have you had any legal troubles lately? Right? So, so you'll have to um, work, workshop the types of questions that you can ask in order to find these things out in a more organic way that doesn't come across as I'm just digging for business. Okay, now I'll share with you super top secret, okay? Only for you guys. This secret will give you insight to what every single person in networking wants to know. Everyone, absolutely everyone wants to grow their business. <laughs> Okay, so it's not that secret. I'm sorry, I, I built up the expectation a bit. But, but here's the thing, okay? Everybody wants to build their business. You know that at, right from the beginning. How do you then ask questions to figure out how you can help them to grow their business? There are only three ways that they can achieve this. And this is what business owners and businesses think about. You either help them to increase their revenue or you help them to decrease their expenses, or you help them to manage their risks. So I want you to think about your service for a moment. Which of these three, and you can have more than one, by the way, you can have all three, but you have to be able to show how your services does achieves at least one or more of these three. 
If it doesn't, you're not going to be able to build a business case. You're not going to be able to book that, that next meeting off. Let me show you how I can help you to achieve your goals. So just take, take a bit of time to think about this and to reflect which of these do you achieve. And by the way, now we're talking about being totally other centric. And Darren and I were just having a conversation before about the whole thing about being desperate. Desperation stinks. <laughs> People can smell it from a mile away. The more you focus on helping other people, the less you're going to be thinking about your own problems, right? So I'm not a big fan of you know, faking it till you make it. You may, you may genuinely be desperate for business. You're not trying to hide that fact, but you are trying to focus on the other person and how you can help them. The more others focused you are, the less desperate you're going to come across and the less desperate you'll feel as well. And you're not going to ask for that additional meeting to propose your services if you don't first qualify and find something that you can help them with. So either increasing their revenue, decreasing their expenses, or managing their risks. Just a quick request. If you enjoyed today, please feel free to leave a review on Google Maps. But let's summarize. We need to be highly proactive. Always maintain initiative. Don't wait for others to take action. Create a sales process. So step one, have that initial meet and greet. Step two, if they are qualified, if you have qualified that you can, may be able to help them, organize another catch up. And then the third step is to actually ask for their commitment. And you have to schedule that as well. And the final one is to be fully others-centric. Thank you. <laughs>